Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 1, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary introduce and begin discussing the operation of God's principles and laws relating to forgiveness and repentance in response to listeners' questions. The session was recorded on 23rd of August 2017 from 11.20 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. All right. Well, we're still discussing God's truth about forgiveness. Yeah. There's a lot of groundwork. There is. Um, now I'd like to move on to measuring when forgiveness has occurred. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the process of the mechanics, I called it, mm -hmm. of forgiveness in our next discussion. Mm -hmm. But first, I just want to ask you about our own, like our ability to measure when forgiveness is actually complete inside of us. Mm. Um, obviously, God knows and God's laws are measuring it. But is it possible for me personally to measure when my process of forgiving another person is finished? Definitely. Obviously, God wanted to make it as easy as possible <laughs> <laughs> for us to know when we've forgiven and we've completed the process. You know. And the same probably applies to repentance, of course. You know, God wanted to make it as easy as possible for us to know when we have fully repented for something. Yeah. But when it comes to forgiveness and knowing how whether forgiveness has occurred is really quite simple. We have emotionally forgotten. Mm. That doesn't mean we have intellectually forgotten. In other words, we still remember the event. Mm -hmm. We can still recall the event. We can still recall all the occurrences that cause the particular emotion to exist within us but the emotion doesn't exist within us anymore. Mm. So it's not a place of denial mm. of emotion. It's a place where you've released emotion through experience mm -hmm. to the point where now you've forgotten what the emotion feels like. Mm. Now, we had an example of this just recently in a channeling that we did that people may have listened to yes. or may be listening to. I know it's not out yet, but it will be out soon. Um, but by the time they get this recording, it will definitely be yes, out. Yes. <laughs> And that's the channeling we did with Sonia and Amantu yep. regarding Sonia remembering her third sphere experience. Yes. She couldn't remember the emotions. We, we started talking about the emotions. She said, I can't remember what <laughs> the emotions were. So we had to invite Amantu, a person who was helping her, to relate. He yes. remembered the experience she had yep. and we could relate some of the emotions she had it more easily than she could yeah. remember them. Yeah. And that's because he was emotionally connected to helping her mm -hmm. so he could, he could connect with the experiences she was going through. And she was going through the experience at the time. It was very intense for her. Yeah. A two-year experience, uh, I think it was, or a three-year experience, I think it was, that she went through in the third sphere to go through some emotions about desire. And, and yet when we talked to her, now that she's in the celestial heavens, she couldn't emotionally remember remember yeah. she said oh yeah i had this feeling and i said well how does that feel like <laughs> can't remember <laughs> right and and this is what it's like you emotionally when you have forgiven you have emotionally forgotten mm. the event you can't recall the emotions that were related to the event anymore yeah you can still recall the event yeah but you can't recall the emotions anymore. It's like they're gone and they are gone. When you're forgiven, they are gone. Mm. Yeah. The beauty of them going is that they no longer harm you and no longer cause you to harm others. Yes. There's no driving force in you anymore that causes any harm to you or harm to others by retaining the emotion. Mm. So that's how we'll know when there's no... It's almost like... There's no resentment, there's no pain, there's no There's no guilt, there's emotional no, charge no related emotional charge. to the memory. But it, I was reflecting as you were speaking, it's almost like a lot of times because we just spoke in our previous section about how often we're not very sensitive to things that we have to forgive. 
it's almost like we go through a process where we're almost in denial of what we need to forgive. So yep. we don't even remember it very well intellectually even. But but usually in that state too, we don't even remember the events either. That's what I mean. We don't remember the events. We don't really remember anything involved. Yeah. Then we become more sensitive and suddenly, whoa, there's all this emotional charge within us yeah, surrounding the memories. All sorts of things, anger, resentment, you know, rage, fear, fear hatred. Yep. All, yep, sorts of all kinds of things and it feels very emotionally yeah it feels inside. out of control oftentimes. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> and then but now we during that process we're becoming more aware of the actual events mm-hmm. and and when the sin. it's and the sin involved Perpetrated we're sensitive others, yeah. becoming more sensitive to the we whole process saying, well that was really off what they did was really bad yes it was really wrong from god's perspective Yep. Mm, which is so we're identifying for ourselves that there's something for me to forgive yes we're seeing that two-part process that you explained earlier that yes. somebody wished to harm me and i have a feeling about that and i still feel things about it you know? yes and on the other side of forgiveness you're saying that actually there's no emotional charge however it seems as though we're far more aware and fully informed about what the sin was towards us. Correct. And we have a more complete memory of it. So when you mention forgive and forget, a lot of people see that as a forgetting of the actual events when actually it's it's more like forgive, forget the emotion, but really have a full knowledge of the events and the sin involved. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, God, part, of, part of the process from God's perspective here is to help us understand sin and its consequences, Mm -hmm. whether we perpetrated or others have perpetrated towards us. So if we actually went through this entire process and come out the other end not understanding what the sin was, Mm -hmm. then we haven't begun the process really properly. No. And we haven't actually finished the process either. To, to, To finish the process of forgiveness, we need to understand what the sin was and we need to see that it was a sin. We need to see that somebody else perpetrated it towards us. Yeah. And we need to see that we had emotions as a result of their perpetrated you know, emotions mm-hmm. towards us. And we need to release these emotions in order to completely emotionally forget. Yeah. So that's the process of measuring it. You know, so, so it is able to be measured, but again, it requires ethics on my part. Yeah. Like I can, I can say, oh, I've forgotten about that, and really I'm in complete denial. Yeah. Or I can say, oh, there was no, no, you didn't do anything wrong, which is also complete denial. Yes. Because the person did do something wrong. Yeah. Uh, so that is complete denial too. Or I can say, no, you did sin. Mm-hmm. But I've gone through the emotions now, yep. and I've gone out the other side of these emotions, and now I, I don't really feel anything about it now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting thing that will happen too with regard to the law of attraction mm-hmm. is the law of attraction will demonstrate to us that we've completed the process yes. by not bringing the same perpetrated act mm-hmm. towards our life. Mm. So it will actually demonstrate that we have completed the process. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I say not bringing, obviously when we're at one with God, we still have people bringing harm towards us. Yeah. Um, but we will see that they are the persons mm. through their attractions that have mm-hmm. attracted these events rather than us. Yes. Yeah, so we become informed in that regard too. Yes. We know who attracted or who created the event. Mm-hmm. When we're still in a state of not forgiving, we pa- participate in the creation of the events that trigger us into forgiveness. Yeah. Once we've completed the process of forgiving, we no longer participate emotionally mm-hmm. in events that are perpetrated towards us. Yeah. Interesting thought. Very interesting. Because we're basically saying there that when we don't forgive, we are partly a perpetrator of further harm towards ourselves. Yeah. That's a sucky thing to feel, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, I, it's, think it's I think it's powerful and wonderful. Very but, powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Because you start seeing that the act of not forgiving yes. perpetrates unloving actions towards yourself. Yeah. No, it's only sucky when you want to hold on to resentment. <laughs> well, it's only sucky, I feel, if you want to harm others or blame others for yeah. what they've done yeah. to you. So, like, yeah. but, but the reality is it's very important to understand that fact. Definitely. Yeah, so there's some very important principles in there yeah. that help us measure 
Yeah. Whether we've truly forgiven or not. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So that's how we personally can measure if we've completed the process of forgiveness. Yes. So let's move on now to how God defines forgiveness and repentance. Sure. I'd like to just give a summary of God's definition of forgiveness. Yep. 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 Fair enough. (laughs) So how could we summarize God's definition of forgiveness? Well, basically uh, what we're doing here is just revisiting, isn't it, some of the things we previously said about forgiveness. So basically for forgiveness to the conditions have to exist. Yeah. Firstly. For, for so someone has to sin and wish to harm me. Uh, not necessarily wish to harm me, but they have oh, harmed me. Yeah. Yep. Wish they, they sin, so they disobey God's laws in some way. Yes. And they harm me through that process. Through that process. Whether they were aware or not is measurable in quantity. Yep. But but the actual harm has occurred. The sin has occurred. The actual harm has occurred. That has to have happened first. Yep. Uh, So that the conditions now exist under which I need to forgive. Yep. So God's definition of forgiveness is firstly, the conditions have to exist. Yes, for me to have something to forgive. For me to have something to forgive. Yes. Secondly... I need to go through a process. Which we talk a lot about the process. Which is later. Yeah. But I need to go through a process which yep. results in my no longer emotionally remembering mm-hmm. the harm that was done to me. Yeah. And once I've completed that process, I will no longer remember that any harm was done to me, even though I will remember the event. Yeah. But emotionally, I will not remember the harm. Oh, 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 I've completely forgotten the harm. Mm-hmm. You, you can see that that means that the person who harmed me, I'd probably feel okay towards as well, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Because uh, I don't any mo- longer remember the harm. Yeah. So, so I feel <laughs> I w- okay towards it. I would, again, as we mentioned in the previous um, section, I would be very, very aware and fully knowledgeable about the harm that they did to me yes. and about the conditions within them that caused their harm. Their harm. Yep. So I'd be fully informed, but there's no emotional charge towards that person. Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Awesome. So okay. I've completed, I've emotionally forgotten, basically, what, what the, the person, person has done. Yeah. I've emotionally forgotten it. Yeah. Not through denial, not through... Alzheimer's, <laughs> not through some other in intellectual or emotional condition, yeah. but I have truly gone through, I've gone through the experience of releasing those emotions to the mm-hmm. point where I've emotionally forgotten. Now, of course, when I'm at one with God, because there is no emotional resonance in me, mm-hmm. that process is instant. Mm. I forgive as God forgives when I'm at one with God. Yes. And the way God forgives is there's no emotional resonance inside of God for there to be any harm that God feels about the thing. Mm-hmm. And so he instantly forgives. It yeah. doesn't mean that I feel the benefit of that forgiveness because I have to go through repentance issues yeah. For, yeah. to do that. But, yeah. Yeah. And we'll get on to all of that. But this was just a, a very brief summary. Yes. So we establish clearly sin harm against me that I have released the memory of. It's all gone from me. God says that's forgiveness. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? It's awesome. It's, <laughs> it's, awesome. A, it's an amazing place to be, of course, because it means that it means so much for our lives and so much for our welfare and so much for our physical welfare and our body. And like there are so many benefits to it, but, yes. but uh, most of which people on earth have no idea about because they just think that Forgiveness is a sort of an imaginary state of a, of a religious person. Yeah. But, but the reality is quite different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Following on, if we could just have a summary of mm-hmm. God's definition of repentance. Mm. So how could we briefly summarize how God sees repentance? First thing is that I have to have sinned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in order to be repentant for something that I've sinned yeah. about. So I have to have taken an action, had a word or a thought or a desire or an intention mm-hmm. that is in disobedience to one or more of God's laws yep. in order for me to have sinned mm-hmm. 
And once I have sinned, that is going to cause damage to myself or others. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm going to need to repent for if I'm ever going to be happy. Yeah. So, so one. my choice to sin. Yep. Has to have happened. And it creates harm. Whenever I sin, it creates harm. Yes. Anyway. And we can see here again that I have to see that I did sin. So I have to at least recognize what the sin was. I have to at least know what I did. Right. Yeah. Because if I don't know what I did, then I'm not yet at that first stage of recognizing the sin. Yes. All right. So, so these people who say, I don't know how I've harmed you, but whatever it is, forgive me. Yeah. That's not repentance. No. You must know how a person's harmed yes. you in order to be repent, or how you've harmed another in order to repent for your actions towards mm -hmm. them. You must know how you've harmed them. Yeah. And if you don't know how you've harmed them, then you're not sorry. No. <laughs> you're not repentant from yeah. God's perspective. Because a, a lot of this hinges on the emotional reasons that we do the harm, that we do the sinning, doesn't it? Of course, it? unless we see the sin, we are probably not going to join it with the emotions that cause the sin. Mm -hmm. We're not going to work our way through the emotions. And this brings us to the second phase. We have to emotionally work through all of the emotions that caused us to sin, mm -hmm. that caused us to take the action, that caused us to have the desire to harm the other person yeah. or harm myself. Yeah. And I have to know and feel and experience those emotions mm -hmm. in order to be repentant. So you can see the repentance process is a more difficult process than the forgiveness process well, because it requires not only dealing with the fact that I took the action and yeah. therefore have a whole heap of things to deal with, but also requires that I deal with the cause of why I took the action mm -hmm. and deal with all that too. Yeah. Yep. So it requires a lot, a longer process generally, uh, a lot more humility, generally um, and it is a more difficult process and therefore a process most people tend to resist for longer <laughs> yeah and how does god define it when it's done how does god well it's not really when it's done because we've sort of talked about that but it's what's god's definition of a repentant person well god does define it by this method you will no longer feel any You'll be completely open to the concept of the sin, mm -hmm. completely open to all the damage the sin did, yep. completely open to every aspect of it, including its cause and why you chose to do it and what those emotions were in your childhood or in your young adult life or actually that caused you to have this predisposition towards that particular sin. And even knowing all of that, you can't emotionally remember how it felt. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know you've repented. You've repented. Mm. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Finally, mm -hmm. let's talk about how my forgiving benefits me and others. Mm. Mm. So forgiveness actually changes my soul's constitution, if you like, doesn't it? Mm. it there's a physical and scientific state that my soul exists in mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And then when I forgive, something physically and scientifically changes in my soul. Mm -hmm. So what's the condition of my soul once forgiveness has occurred? Um, yeah, so what is it? What, in terms if, of if its, I was to in terms look of its at constitutions. It, if, I, if I was to look at it, to take a photo of my soul yep. before I've forgiven something and take a photo after, how would it look different? If even? you could, right. Let's, you let's can't, describe it. But, yeah. So let's say yeah. photo before your soul. You've probably got unknown to you, you know, when you're in a state of denial mm -hmm. that you need to forgive anything. Unknown to you, you've probably got resentment in your soul mm -hmm. that's causing you to take certain actions right now. So the resentment is, all, is it's, why it's is dark, it there? It's dark as a black and grey thing in your soul that actually is sitting there because you've not released any emotion so if we could associated relate associated with what was perpetrated towards you sorry yeah if we could relate it to the harm that was done yeah i am yeah i thought <laughs> yes <laughs> sorry you just do it and 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 the and we you've got hatred in you that you may or may not be aware of but it's in you and, it, and it's causing destruction to your soul like it's causing a darkness in your soul disease in your soul it's causing disease in your physical and spiritual bodies. You've got resentment. Uh, you know, the desire to attack generally comes from these kind of emotions as well. 
all sitting inside of you? All these things are colouring your soul in different colours. Yep. Rage and will be existing inside of the soul mm -hmm. as well, all coloured up in a certain rage as well, affecting the operation of your soul and affecting your physical body and your spirit body as well, affecting different areas of your body, right to the point of creating diseases in your body and everything. So that's what your snapshot is beforehand. So it's all rage and yucky resentment. It's all anger. Well, it's not, not just anger, but there's other emotions too frequently about shame, for mm -hmm. example, guilt and other things like mm -hmm. that also. There, there's, there's frequently a, like a large variety of different types of emotions that all govern your current choices and experience. Yes. And that's all come from, so if we just talked about it, no soul exists like this, but just if there was one uh, situation event. where event where I was harmed, that could create that just the one could create this whole myriad of conditions. Yeah. Yep. And usually for the average person on the planet, obviously it's not just one, but there's hundreds so of many. events. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. there's, there's quite yeah. a substantial amount of events yeah. that have been stored in the soul. Just excuse me. Yeah. So, so these particular emotions have been stored in the soul mm -hmm. and they do damage to the mm -hmm. soul. They, 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 they block pathways of flow of emotion. They block pathways of energy. They block energy in the both bodies, the physical and the spirit bodies as well. Blocking flow of energy and emotion in those bodies, they create physical disease in the spirit body and in the, in the physical body. Mm -hmm. So that's the snapshot before forgiveness takes place. Yep. After forgiveness has taken place, none of those emotions exist in that soul. Mm -hmm. There is no longer any subsequent effect to the spirit body and physical body of those emotions existing in the soul. So, so there is a substantial difference yeah. in the look and appearance of the soul yeah. from before and after. And what is the... So obviously there's a certain um, physical component to the emotions about the harmful event itself the the person who harmed me mm -hmm. and towards myself how are they different in the aftershot well you know beforehand we might have resentments directed at that individual but we also may have resentments directed at ourselves mm -hmm. we are also blocked to receiving love as a result and usually what we do when we're not forgiving is we put up prickles you know, yeah. we become prickly. Yeah. We become any type of little tiny thing that's said to us, we're reacting to. Yeah. Any tiny little tiny thing that, that triggers that particular hurt that's within us causes a reaction within us that makes us re uh, reject mm -hmm. love and reject happiness in our life as well. Mm -hmm. All of these things are all happening before the fact. After we've forgiven, yeah. we're open to love. We're yes. open to receiving kindness and compassion and sympathy mm -hmm. and we're not addictive in our desires. We're not driven by our fear anymore about those events. Yeah. Our fear of preventing the emotions that we feel, we're not driven by that anymore either. Yeah. Our desires become far more purified yes. in terms of the way we act mm -hmm. with regard to everything we do, not just the things pertaining to that particular event, and but everything we do is affected by our releasing of the hurt, the hurt that was perpetrated towards us. Excellent. Mm. Thank you. Mm. So it's a major change mm. that occurs in the soul mm. and therefore a subsequent change that occurs in both our physical and spirit bodies mm. is also going to be the result. Mm. 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 So diseases that we had that were driven by these particular emotions Diseases like that that can t eventually kill us will begin to disappear yeah. from our body, yeah. from our physical body as mm -hmm. well. So there's sort of physical and emotional benefits to, yes. to yeah. the process of forgiveness. But it's the emotional benefits you feel more intensely, of course, because we're emotional beings. We yeah. feel the emotional benefits far more intensely. And eventually we notice the physical benefits generally. <laughs> our body takes a bit longer to respond mm -hmm. uh, to the benefits to our soul. So, you know, it could take anywhere up to seven years to see a benefit in our body. But, uh, yeah, our soul, we, we notice the differences instantly after we're truly forgiven somebody. Mm. Mm. So 
So now let's look at how forgiveness specifically benefits the person who forgives. And I know in your previous answer, you've just touched upon this already. You've mm. spoken a lot about it. Specifically here, I wanted to ask, how does a person feel after they've forgiven someone who harmed them? Yeah, so before we were looking at the physical effects on the soul and the bodies. Yeah. Right. Now we want to examine more the emotions. Yeah. Yeah. So, so before forgiveness, as I said, there are emotions of resentment, hatred, anger, frustration, annoyance, and all of these very, they are painful emotions that mm. cause your unhappiness. They exist within you. You're carrying them around everywhere you go. Yeah. Everything you do is being infected infected literally mm -hmm. by these emotions once you've forgiven because those emotions no longer exist within you no longer is there there any of those effects in fact now you're open to love compassion as i as i said before understanding kindness even understanding the person who you forgave mm. you even understand the choices they made and what caused them and if you want and you often feel even driven to help them Mm. If they if they would uh, receive such help, and you can see everything so clearly, you can see the error that was perpetrated and its effects really clearly. Everything very the effects in you, the effects in them, and and you also have this fairly strong desire to help them if they're willing to be helped, mm. of course, which which is very. You know, often not the case, not, but, yeah. but but you still have a desire to. If and 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 remember, whenever we have a pure desire like that, God acts as if we've done it. Yeah. So that gets rewarded too. So there are a lot of beautiful, happy events that occur to the person who's forgive, forgiven. Forgiven. Yeah. And I I associate forgiveness before forgiveness with feeling very burdened and bound mm. to to the past. And, and bound to the person. And bound to the person. That's how it feels to yeah, me. It is. And then when forgiveness is complete, it's like a feeling of freedom. Like I'm free from that event and that terrible negative bind yes. to, to a person. And this is what most people don't realise. When you don't forgive, there is emotional projections coming out of you, going towards them of anger, resentment and so forth. And then there are going to be subsequent emotions coming out of them towards you for that anger and resentment and so forth. Yeah. And and so what you really are doing emotionally and and in, in an energy system mm. is binding yourself now to their life. Yeah. So now every thought they have about you, you feel. Yeah. Every feeling they have about you, you feel. So not only is there the original sin now that, you know, harmed you, but now you've got this binding effect that where you're actually feeling what they feel about you all the time. Yeah. And feeling, you know, how they feel about you all the time and so forth. And it's quite disturbing. Mm. And then all of a sudden when that's broken, you know, it's like you go for weeks or months even without even thinking about them or and and certainly you don't act like you 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 know their projection at you might have been you're a useless person you no longer think you're a useless person yeah. you know and things so, like that so it's an incredibly liberated feeling if you contrast those two states yes. one is very bound and heavy and and on the other side of forgiveness it's almost like you it sort of feels to me sometimes like Forgiveness chain, uh, lack of forgiveness chains me to this past event that's weighing on me. And chains you to the person who put And the person. It. And it's almost like breaking the chain and being able to move forward with my life. Yes. Um, in Without a, even the past life affecting your it, forward decisions. Yes. Because at the moment, for many issues, I feel how much my the past that I haven't let go of is affecting my forward movement yeah. and any break that I make from the past feels like a huge, you know, wow, I've got energy to move forward on an issue that's not affected by these negative beliefs, past hurts, all of those things. Yes. Yeah. A very powerful effect on, on the person who forgives. Yes. In fact, it's a more powerful effect on the person who forgives mm. than the person who's forgiven. Yeah. And God designed it that way purposefully yeah. so that it would benefit the person who forgives more then it benefits the person who forgive, who he's forgiven. He's forgiven, yeah. yeah. So, and that's frequently not understood. 
No. Um, you know, frequently I see all sorts of things playing out in the worlds, you know, in day-to-day -day life in the world, you know, you see the news and so forth, where people hold on to so much resentment and rage and anger and so forth that they can't see they're destroying their own soul, can't see they're destroying their own life, their own future, they're pulling this past into the present constantly. Yeah and it's affecting their future choices and decisions and therefore are going to affect their future while they continue to do it. And all of that disappears when you forgive. Mm. So, you know, there's really no, there's no good reason at all for a person to choose to not forgive. Mm. And there's plenty of benefits to forgiving mm. for the person who does the forgiving. Even if the person who, you know, done the deed, the sin, um, even if there's no benefit to them. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. We talk specifically in a later session about what that's like for the person who's forgiven. Yeah, we need yeah. to sort of spend a bit of time on that emotionally because it's, it's so important to understand the binding that occurs yes. and the binding of your life and how much it destroys every decision, every, every you know, your marriage, your life, your children, your every everything you do in your life is affected by the things you choose to not forgive. To not forgive. Mm. Yeah, and that's yeah. why the process of forgiveness, and particularly the process of forgiving parents, because they are the ones who perpetrate a lot of harm yeah. towards a child who could not, uh, you know, could not prevent, prevent the harm. Yeah. And it's a very important process in your life choices for your future. Mm. Very important process. Mm. And in the end, you also have some deep clarity about what is wrong from God's perspective and what is right from yeah. God's perspective. And this helps guide you to do what is right yourself Yeah. in your life. And as a parent yourself, if you are a parent. If you are a parent, yeah. it guides you as a parent as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, th th there are some amazingly beautiful benefits mm -hmm. for forgiving. And, and the problem is most of us don't see it. Mm. And in fact, we feel that we're giving a whole heap of power to the person who we're forgiving and so forth. And none of that is true at all. Mm. And in fact, uh, you know, you see this playing out all the time too, you know. You know, we recently watched a, a thing where a woman had been raped and she was on a panel with other women who had not been raped, ironically. Mm. And the woman who'd been raped had gone through some of the process of forgiving the perpetrator. And the woman who hadn't been raped we're in such a rage that she did it. Yeah. Like, amazing. Yeah. Like, they don't see the calmness of this girl mm -hmm. and the way that it's no longer affecting the rest of her life and, yeah. and her, the action she's taken. And while she might not have gone through the process completely, mm -hmm. um, she certainly had gone a long way towards uh, yes. addressing the issue. Much further than just about anyone yeah. that I've ever heard talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and yet so many people around them are, ang are, ang are angry with her for forgiving. Yes. And that shows you how much resistance there is on the planet towards forgiving. Yeah. A huge amount of resistance, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk briefly about how forgiveness benefits the person who is forgiven. So that mm. by that I mean I've done something to harm you and you forgive me. Yep. What does that feel like for me? Yep. Yeah. Well, it depends now, doesn't mm. it? It depends on a lot of things. Um, firstly, if you're humble, there's a whole heap of things that it possibly can do for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're not humble, there's a whole heap of very negative things you're going to feel. <laughs> <laughs> so which is let's, the law. Let's, uh, yeah. Which is the law involved. So let's look, at, firstly, if you're not humble, yep. what would happen? If you're not humble, you would now know that I know that what you did was wrong mm. and that would drive you insane <laughs> because you don't believe it's wrong or because you think you had a justice in doing it or whatever yeah. it's gonna it's gonna cause you to feel like angry with me all the time and resentful of me all the time and like there's going to be all sorts of emotions that come up in you because i now recognize the truth of what you did mm. And you no longer have a... And I no longer accept the untruth that you're perpetrating. Yes, because before you forgave me, you were really accepting the untruth, weren't you? Correct. Now that you don't, uh, now I'm just confronted with this person who I used to be able to make to feel like it's their problem. Yes. Now saying, I don't have a problem. Exactly. You have a you problem. Do. Yeah. And it drives the people nuts, to be frank. Mm. It does. Mm. And, 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 you know, sometimes can cause their further violence and other things, which actually degrades their condition even further, you know yeah. what I mean? 
it, its purpose, from God's perspective, the reason why it happens this way, is that God's trying to help the person who sinned mm -hmm. to become aware of the sin. And the only way many people become aware of a sin is if everyone around them becomes aware of the sin mm. they perpetrated. So, so it's like when we don't forgive, it's like we're in agreement with the perpetrator. That's pretty powerful. But as soon as we forgive, we're no longer in agreement with the perpetrator. Right? When we don't forgive, we give the perpetrator emotions. Mm -hmm. They know they've harmed us and they know we hurt from it. Mm. When we forgive, we no longer give them emotions. Now they think we're not hurt anymore mm -hmm. and we're not harmed. And that often drives them nuts because they wanted to harm us. Mm. <laughs> Can you see that it creates a lot of, uh, for a person who's not humble, the, if the sinner, the perpetrator is not humble, it, it has a large effect on them, becoming, it causes them, it causes a lot of potential awareness to mm. develop in them that, wow, they really feel bad now with this person for some reason that they don't really understand <laughs> oftentimes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like when people have been like that with me, they get driven absolutely nuts by it. It's yeah. just amazing. Like if I have gone through the process of forgiving someone and they're not humble, mm -hmm. man, the the reactions they have are intense. <laughs> so rageful kind of Rageful, reactions. violent. Yeah. Um, and often go ahead and destroy their own life so much as a result of their rage and violence. Mm. Um, even though they frequently don't affect me by it, by yeah. it because I'm no longer attracting their specific events. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just really intense to see mm. how people go off the deep end with it mm -hmm. uh, because of their lack of humility. Mm. So, so it, it, but that is still a benefit to yes. the person because at least they now know that somebody else knows the truth. Mm. And also, um, speaking from personal experience, of when I have harmed you and you have forgiven me and I've not yet been humble about it, so I can speak from the perspective of not being humble and then being more humble about it, but mm -hmm. when I was in a state of not being humble, that did make me feel very angry. So the ways that I was able to manipulate you before, I no longer could, mm -hmm. and I got really, really angry. Mm -hmm. And do you know how that benefited me? I got to the point where I went, Oh, wow. what is going on with me? Holy crap, I'm angry. <laughs> I was really angry. And, and not only does that feel bad, I'm really concerned about how angry I can become. Yeah. And I think maybe I do have the problem. And that causes a build-up of self-awareness. Yes. So yeah. this is the beauty of that state. If, if a person's a bit more open to seeing the truth of it, yeah. they can see that there's a build-up of self-awareness of, wow, I am pretty angry now. Mm. Uh, why am I so angry at this person all of a sudden? Mm. <laughs> what's what's mm -hmm. going on? And uh, the sudden is because that person might have forgiven us. Yes. And now, and, but they now won't allow our behaviour anymore once they forgive us. Mm -mm. They won't allow our behaviour anymore. And that drives us nuts because <laughs> we want our behaviour to be allowed. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting as well, isn't it, when if you were talking about the not forgiving state. So mm -hmm. you, if you had remained in a non-forgiveness state with me, yeah. then conversely, you would have supported my lack of awareness. Yeah, because I have a lack of awareness. Yes. You, I'm now supporting your lack of awareness. Yeah. Also, I have an internal acceptance the emotion's still within me, so I've got an internal acceptance of the action. Yeah. Whether I believe I haven't or not. Yeah. There's also a high likelihood I feel hatred, anger, and other emotions which you feel will be feel terrible to you. Yeah. Which will then you would probably respond to. Yes. And so forth. So so you end up in this terrible bind where you just try to keep each party is, is causing more and more pain to the other party. Mm. Mm. And, and that's a terrible state to be in. I've seen marriages just totally disintegrate because of that. Yeah. One yeah. person do one act and the other person does another act and the other person does another act. And they're reciprocal eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, mm. life for a life, doing these acts, which cause their total destruction. Yeah. Because neither party is willing to forgive the yeah. other for yeah. what they've done. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So okay. that's so if we're not humble. They're not humble. Yeah. If we're humble, it's quite amazing, actually. Because if we're humble, we instantly know that the person is no longer accepting our behaviour as valid. Mm. 
And as I said, that automatically begins to uh, rise in us a uh, self-analysis of, wow, I, I perpetrated some bad behaviour mm. towards that person. Mm. So it has the potential, if we're humble on the receiving end, mm. it has the potential to trigger us into repentance. Yeah. And, and that's where the law is designed to take us yep. into repentance. And so, you know, from God's perspective and from our own under those circumstances, if we're the perpetrator, it's a very helpful result. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And again, from my experience, that experience, when that has happened for me now in a more humble state, not perfectly humble, <laughs> but in a more humble state, mm. it often triggers shame, which is sort of well, that's the, a part of the law of compensation. It is. Uh, so I, under those circumstances. Yes. I feel it's the shame that was already within me mm -hmm. as a result of the law of compensation. Yes. But now it's exposed more to me. It was always there, but now it just feels like it's more. Yeah. So you feel bad about what you've done. Yes. And Which is a, necessary, isn't it? Yes, it is necessary. God needs you to recognise it was a sin. Mm -hmm. You know, for the perpetrator, God needs you to recognise it was a sin to feel that it was a sin yeah. and to feel that you did harm to others yeah. and to feel like you want to be forgiven for that harm yes. that you did to others. Yes. And that's the process of repentance. Yes. So. But then being on the receiving, so I'm more humble, but I'm on the receipt of being forgiven. That also, because I'm, so the shame occurs, but then there's also a, a feeling that um, it's safe to soften to the full amount of the reasons why I've done it and all that, because there's no harshness coming from, from you. the other person. There's no desire to punish me. There's just a feeling of, hey, it's, it's no good. Um, it's no good, but you uh, need to deal with it. But you, it's your problem. It's your issue. And so it feels quite safe and it feels like... It doesn't feel like you're going to get tormented for do having done it. No. It feels like there's an intention on when both people's part. When the person doesn't forgive... Yeah, you feel yeah. like you're getting tormented. Yes. You, you're, you're tormenting each other then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And that's how it feels. <laughs> mm. Mm. Speaking is someone. But once a person is forgiven, if you forgive another, you're no longer tormented. Yeah. And if the other person feels that forgiveness, they go through a process where they become no longer tormented by yes. you. Yeah. Anymore. Yes. By the fact that they did all this wrong to you. Yeah. Mm. And there's a feeling that um, not only is it safe to explore those emotions, but there's a feeling that both you and the person that you've harmed just want the, the reason why this harm has happened to be gone. It doesn't feel like a personal um, punishment. Punishment it doesn't there's feel punitive. A, it's not punitive, but also there's an acknowledgement in the person who's forgiven that there is a reason that is not the entirety of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's just a reason inside of you why you've done this thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be great for it to come out. <laughs> it'd be, it needs to be corrected, yes. Yeah. yeah. And and in a more humble state, that feels wonderful. Mm -hmm. Whereas it And it feels like you're progressing. Yeah. When you do that. Yeah. Like, if you don't do it, it doesn't feel like you're progressing <laughs> at all, does it? <laughs> no. But just mm -hmm. for a person who has been forgiven, it, that's quite a, an encouraging um, and motivating if mm. the person is humble. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it also assists them, or me in this case, to understand that the sin is not all of me, that mm. the sin is just a part of me that can come out. Because the person who's forgiven me understands that. Yes. And so now within our relationship, there's a feeling that this is not... It's just a problem. Yes, it's it just a problem. Can be solved. It's not all of you, whereas yeah. the person who hasn't forgiven me is like, you You're are the problem. The problem. Yeah. It's all of you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you really feel the difference. Very much, yeah. yeah. If you're sensitive again, yeah. oftentimes a person who's, you know, not humble won't be sensitive to that. So they mm. won't know that. But mm. if you're sensitive, you'll know that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of beautiful benefits to the person who is forgiven as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Lovely yeah. benefits. Yeah. And, and so... It, but it, even if those benefits are never realised, it's still wise to forgive somebody <laughs> because of the benefits to yourself. To yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Good night. thank you for engaging this beautiful discussion with me on uh, not only on how forgiving benefits me and others, but the whole, this first session has really been about God's truth about forgiveness. Yeah. Laying some groundwork. So 
Let's just summarise what we've talked about today. Yeah. Because in our next session, we'll move on to new material. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're probably going to build on this material now. We, we? are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. We need to build on it to answer some of her, some of Sandra's questions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So the the topic we were talking about was the personal application of God's laws of forgiveness. Yeah. And. Today, we've focused our attention on God's truth about that subject. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about God's truth about forgiveness, and we started right back at the beginning. Yeah, how to do, determine God's truth about anything. How do we, how do we know <laughs> God's truth about anything? What are the methods? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about the importance of law and why God has created law, the relevance of law to the subject of forgiveness. Yeah. Because someone has to have broken the law. There's got to be a sin. Yes. Someone has to have broken the law in order for you to forgive them. To forgive something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, we talked about who and what is harmed through disobedience to God's law. Yeah. And again, this is all very relevant to the forgiveness, repentance matters, yeah. isn't it? And how we determine when we have something to forgive, how we determine when we have something to repent for. Mm. And then in this last part of our discussion, we've talked a lot about this or a bit about the science measuring when it's occurred. Yeah. Yeah. And then God, how God really defines it yeah. from an external perspective, that those emotions are no longer those in, um, motivating forces that caused us either to, to be harmed mm. or to do harm. They're gone from us. The emotional memory is gone from That's us. That's right. We sort yeah. of talked about emotional forgetfulness. Yes. And and it's and, and now people might understand better some of the pageant messages about forgiveness because they say forgiveness is forgetfulness. Mm. And and people when they read that first they think oh that means forgetfulness intellectually. No, it means forgetfulness emotionally. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And then just now we've talked about how forgiveness benefits myself and other people. Yeah. Yeah. Soul, and my soul. Of which I'm just one half, by the way, so it also affects my other mate yes. every time I forgive. Particularly yes. if I'm forgiving my other mate, it has a powerful benefit. <laughs> yeah, and and I feel very emotional about that because I've been on the receiving end of that. It's very beautiful. Yeah, and, it's wonderful. And I hope that this whole series can um, hopefully inspire people towards this. It's what is quite feels like a you know, an emotionally charged topic in itself. Yeah, but hopefully it will inspire them, won't it, towards having a sincere longing to engage the forgiveness and repentance processes because it's like it's such a powerful effect on your life and it's very emotional but yeah. it's also very freeing and yes. there's so many lovely benefits from it. You really do want to go through the process and this is why we talk about emotions a lot because mm. Emotions are a key yes. in allowing emotions is a key to going through the processes. Yes. So, so, you know, that, that's why we've related those particular experiences about emotions and trying to help people understand that yeah. emotions are the way to go. People, <laughs> you know. and, and that's been really nice balancing act in our discussion today is that the, obviously the theme of emotions comes up again and again, yeah. but that's balanced now with this idea of, but what's God's truth? Yeah. about, you know, the harm. How am I going to establish God's truth? I'm going to have to have ethics and morality. So even though I've got these emotions that might want me to think this or go in this way, yeah. what's the ethical and moral perspective on that? So I've got these emotions in me that <laughs> want me to say that every time you don't meet my addiction, you're sinning against yes. me. You know? yes. But my ethics go, okay, I can't really say that yeah. anymore. <laughs> now, from God's perspective, <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I observe and if I do an experiment and if I try and feel my feelings and my real motivations and God's feelings, can yeah. I really say that? Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's how we can start to really see what forgiveness and repentance is actually about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's wonderful that we can see all of those kind of things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for the discussion. No worries. What's our next uh, port of call? So our next port of call, we're going to talk more about God's truth about forgiveness. Yeah. We're going to get into 
what I affectionately call the mechanics of forgiveness. No worries, yeah. So that is so what, more of the process as it involves us personally, emotionally, and what it feels like me for yeah. for me when I get down to the nitty gritty of it. How what, do I feel going what's through going this? to be involved? <laughs> yeah. um, a, bit, a bit of this you can see is a bit sort of fear questions, aren't they? Because it's like being worried about what you're going to feel before you feel it is obviously driven by fear. But anyway, we will address some of these issues. But also today, I've purposely kept us away just from the actual process yeah, the, yeah. of the steps in the emotional process so so that we can really focus on that in another discussion. Yeah, and the main reason why we need to do that is we need to help people identify when they're actually going through forgiveness and when they're just fooling themselves. Exactly. Uh, and later, obviously, we'll have a similar conversation about when they're actually going through repentance or they're just <laughs> fooling themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll see how we go in our next session. Mm-hmm. Um because all of these things we need to talk about before we talk about Sandra's. So at some point letter. we'll get around to reading <laughs> yeah. your letter, Sandra, Sandra and actually. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Um, it might not be, we might get to it next session, but it might be the third session in this series. Yeah, so, most likely, given yeah. the amount of material we've yet to yeah. cover. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. It's been yeah, a, my just pleasure. a my pleasure. really interesting discussion. And we'd like to thank our uh, recorders who have been through this process with us for the last four or five hours. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Setting up for us today and everything. And, and without their help mixing it all and also eventually editing it all, <laughs> you wouldn't have a recording, people. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great that we've got it's people to help us do that. And we hope that it's uh, been a discussion that benefits you and we look forward to seeing you next time. Yes. See you later, people. <laughs>